What is up? How are you? I hope you had a great day and are having fun too. You know how it is, guys. Sometimes I just make up random stuff and we just go with it and here we are. And that's what that was. So happy Thursday, guys. Welcome back to another installment of Mr. Eric Reads. We are going into another classic book by Stan and Jan Berenstain. And this time our Berenstain Bears friends are solving the mystery of the escape of the Bog Brothers. They sound like some nasty folks, don't they? So, sit back, relax, and enjoy this tale on your Thursday evening, right here on Mr. Eric Reads. I'm Brother Bear. One day, my partners and I were relaxing in our office in a big hollow tree. My partners are Sister Bear, Cousin Fred, and Lizzie Bruin. We're the Bear Detectives. We share the hollow tree with our old friend, Dr. Wise Old Owl, who sometimes helps us with tough cases. Well, we weren't exactly relaxing. I mean, Fred was sweeping up a little bit and Sister was listening to her favorite music station and Lizzie was watching a spider spin a web. That's when the music stopped on Sister's favorite station. We interrupt this program to bring you the latest news. The Bog Brothers, Bear Country's most dangerous criminals, have just escaped from jail. <gasps> Not again, I said. Those Bog Brothers are a nuisance. Most of the citizens of Bear Country were law-abiding, but not the Bog Brothers. They lived in a tumble-down shack out in Forbidden Bog. They were mean and nasty. The club-carrying, tobacco-chewing Bog Brothers broke almost every law on the books. Not only did they rob and cheat, but they also made rude remarks and crossed against the light. And every time the police put them in jail, they escaped and robbed and cheated some more. There was no doubt about it. This was a case for the Bear Detectives. Follow me, I cried. We headed down the road into town. Well, where are we going? Asked Fred. To the bank, I said. That's where the money is. And that's where the Bog Brothers will go. They've robbed banks before, and my guess, they'll do it again. But when we got to the bank, we found a police bear already standing guard. There were no Bog Brothers to be seen. Now, what should we do? Asked Sister. It was a good question, and I thought about it for a long moment. Follow me, I cried. There's another place that has money and other valuables. Where are we going? asked Lizzie. To the mall, I said. But when we got to the mall, we found a number of police bears already standing guard. There was no way the Bog Brothers were going to get in there. Where should we go now? asked Sister. I reached deep into my brain for the answer to the place that has the most valuable things in all of bear country. Follow me. Uh, where are we going? Asked Lizzie. To the Bearsonian, I cried. The Bearsonian is bear country's biggest museum. It has all sorts of valuable things in its collections. It has valuable jewels, valuable coins, valuable fossils, valuable paintings, and all sorts of other valuable things. When we 
got to the Barrisonian, we found nary a police bear standing guard. We did find Professor Actual Factual, who was in charge of the museum, but he wasn't standing guard. He was sleeping in a hammock. Wake up, Professor, I said. The Bog Brothers have escaped from jail. We think they're going to come rob the museum. Oh, <clears throat> well, and uh, what makes you think that? Asked the Professor. This trail of tobacco juice leading to the museum door, said Sister. Where should we look first? Well, the Hall of Jewels, said the Professor. The Hall of Jewels was full of priceless gems. Is there anything missing? asked Fred when we got there. Hmm, now, uh, let me see, uh, l l l let me see, said the professor. One of the glass cases was empty. <laughs> yes, Lord Grizzly's great diamond stick pin is missing. Oh dear, oh dear, what should we do, said the professor. Let's just follow the tobacco juice, said Lizzie, and it led to the Hall of Coins. We looked around the cases of the old coins. Is anything missing? asked Fred. One of the cases was smashed and broken. Oh, it's, it's missing. Bear Country's first minted coin is missing. Oh, it's priceless, said the professor. The tobacco juice trail led us to the Hall of Fossils. Is there anything missing here? Asked Fred. The professor looked at his prized Tyrannosaurus Rex skeleton. Sure enough, one of its leg bones was missing. The professor was beside himself with grief. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, my precious collections, he cried. What's in the next room? I asked, following the trail. Well, that's, that's the Hall of Wax, said the professor. It contains wax statues of all the famous bears in our history. There's uh, Queen Elizabeth and Black Bear the Pirate, uh, Attila the Bruin, and, and many, many others. I mean, they're very valuable. Is anything missing? asked Fred. The professor looked around at all the wax figures. No, said the professor. No, no nothing is missing. Absolutely nothing. But that wasn't exactly true. Something was missing. Look, said Lizzie, pointing to the floor. The tobacco juice was missing. We had come to the end of the trail. We were very worried. We looked all around at the spooky figures of wax. We were sure the Bog Brothers were close by, but where? We could use some help, said Sister. I sure wish Dr. Wise Old Owl was here. But I am, Dr. Wise Old Owl was there. He was sitting atop Queen Elizabeth's crown. He blinked and ruffled his feathers, and this is what he said. Is there anything missing? I heard you ask, but finding what's missing is not quite the task. Your question should be, how many more statues are here than there were before?
Hmm. How many statues are here than, than there were before? said Fred in a puzzled voice. The professor had already started counting them. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. That's it. There were twelve before, and now there are fifteen. The extra three were the Bog Brothers pretending to be statues. Luckily, the professor had called the police. They arrived in squad cars and stormed the Hall of Wax. All right, right there, you hold it, you bog brothers, shouted Chief Bruno through a bullhorn. The bog brothers didn't put up much of a fight because they were sick from swallowing all that tobacco juice. They couldn't spit it out while they were pretending to be statues, and the police led them away. It didn't take long for the police to find the stolen things. They were hidden in a broom closet. Chief Bruno had a question. Now, uh, just how did you manage to break the case? he asked. Just good old-fashioned detective work, I said. Then we headed back to our office to wait for our next case. The end. That was The Berenstain Bears and the Escape of the Bog Brothers. By Jan and Stan and Jan Berenstain. I hope you guys enjoyed that story. Hope you had a great Thursday. Rest well tonight, guys. Stay safe. Wash those hands and practice kindness in everything you do. And until next time, you young readers and future leaders, this is Mr. Eric signing off. See you around. <laughs>